Hey guys, our movement in the game is a little bit yanky at the moment, but we want it to be smooth. So that so that's what we're going to do in this video and we're going to do it using tweening or in betweening. And this is a way to smooth out movement between two points. There's a lot of great resources on the internet about this, but I'm going to talk about how we do it in libgdx and you're going to see an example of how to implement it in this game. Uh but first, please consider this easing function that I've drawn um, to understand how this works. The y value corresponds to the value that we're interpolating, and each step of the animation is enumerated from 0 to 1 on the x-axis. Uh, there's really a lot of, dif of different functions to choose from, uh, but we're going to use a linear one. Obviously, the example that I've drawn here is not linear. If you're uh, interested in in these other tweening functions, um, I've linked a down in a site in the down in the description. Um, now, libgdx has a common easing functions built in, and they are accessed uh, like this through statically through interpolation. Um, the the start and the stop parameters determine what values on the y-axis we're interpolating between. That looks something like this, so you can choose where we're going from and to, and the a value is an f a float between 0 and 1, determining how far through the animation that we are. Uh, if we decide that our animation is going to progress in time, which is really normal for this type of animation, we know a by dividing the time pass since we start the, the animation by the amount of time that the animation is going to take in total. Hmm. Great. So let's try to implement this in our game. Um, to keep track of the animation, uh, we're gonna add a coordinate set uh, based on floats instead of integers. Now these integers determine logically in the tile map where this actor is located, but these floats are going to represent where the sprite is drawn. So let's call these world X and world Y. Great. Also, we're going to need uh, the coordinate that we're going from and the one that we're going to. I'm going to call these source X and source Y. And these are integers. We also need the destination. There we go. And we also need to know how much time has passed in seconds since we started the animation and how long the animation is going to take. I'm going to set it to half a second for now. Also, we're going to need to keep track of whether or not the actor is walking or standing right now. So we're going to add a state. Now this actor state doesn't know what it is because we haven't added it yet. It's going to be an enumeration for what actors can do. State state, that's weird. There we go. For now I'm just going to put walking and standing, but later on we're going to add biking and surfing as well. Stating, let's go standing, there we go. Great. When we initialize this object, we're going to want the world coordinates to match the logical ones. Like that. And we're going to want the state to be the standing state. This state standing. There we go. This move method is logical and I don't want to mix animation with this if I can avoid it. So I'm going to make two methods that are going to manage all of these fields related to animation. I want a void initialize move and I want a void finish move to clean up the fields after animation. Um, Alright, 
the initialize move needs to know where we're going from and where we're going to. I'm just gonna put the direction that we're going. Great. So let's let's set the values. Since we're updating the source and destination coordinates every time we initialize a new move, I'm just going to update the state down here in finish move for now. I think that's gonna be it's gonna be just fine. Great. Now logically, before we update the map, we want to initialize the move. And the old X, this is before we update the x and y, we can just use the current x and y and the direction x and the direction y from the move method itself. Great. Now, when we attempt a move, right now we're only checking if we're outside the map or if the target tile is occupied. But we also want to test if we're currently in the middle of a move, and if we are, we shouldn't be able to make another move. So if the state is not standing because standing is the only state we have right now where we can start a move from so we're just going to terminate returning a false here great now since we want the world x and world y these are the coordinates the sprite is going to be rendered on we want these to be updated every single frame so we want uh, to make an update method in here so we can update these values and this is where interpolation is going to come in let's give this a delta this is the time since last frame in seconds great we only want to update if the state is walking we're currently walking We want to update the timer by adding the delta to it. And the world x and the world y are going to be updated. And this is where we interpolate. Interpolation. We're going to use the linear one. Actually, let's use the, the power of 2 one right now. Start and end for the x value is going to be our source x and our destination x. And the alpha is going to be the animation timer divided by how long the animation takes. And this is going to be exactly the same for the y value. That's great. Now, if the animation timer is larger than the anim animation time, then we know the animation is over and we can finish our move and set the state back to standing. Now, this, these, this interpolation method should make sure that the world x cannot be greater than destination x and by the time our animation is done over here, it's going to be equal to the destination. And I don't think it's going to cause any trouble that we, don't, we only set these every time we initialize a move, because that's the only thing they're used for anyway. We also need some getters for the world x and y there we go so I believe we are ready to update the screen here now when we render this part we want it to render at the world x and the world y and we need to update the player each frame 
And if we see now, we can see we've got some smooth interpolation for the position of the sprite. However, the camera still follows the logical position of the actor. So it still feels janky, even though the sprite is moving super smooth. So we're also going to update the camera each frame to reflect the world coordinates instead. And we see now that we get this beautiful interpolated movement. But this is not how it works in Pokemon. In Pokemon it's linear, so that's what we're going to do in here. Okay, and I believe we are done adding the smooth movement and interpolation into our game. Thank you for watching.